Hello, this is a sequence that we've put together for you to counter the effects of, of modern lifestyle that unfortunately lead to poor posture. So when we are sitting on our phones, we tend to protrude our head forwards, um, we tend to close up the chest. When we're sitting on couches, the spine rounds, the, the hip flexors shorten, we get tight in the side body. So we're hoping that by going through this practice today, you are going to enable yourself to open up the upper chest and just get more openness into your body. So hopefully you'll be feeling more uplifted after the practice. So the only thing that you need today is a blanket. Now we've got um, cotton blankets from India that work very well because they are nice and dense. So you don't want to use a, a fluffy blanket, you want something quite firm. If you don't have something firm enough, then consider using a, a beach towel um, or a bath towel. The bigger the better, so if you've got a bath sheet, that will be better than the, the smaller size. So we're going to sit in Vajrasana, which is a kneeling position. You can stay in cross legs, which will show you different variations. So if it's difficult to sit as I am doing, if it's difficult to get the sitting bones down, what you can do um, is fold up your blanket or your towel as many times as necessary and just slip it in between the sitting bones and the heel. So just you've got a little bit of extra height. Um, if this simply isn't working, you're going to take a svastikasana as Dean is sitting. And often when we sit in this way, the, the knees are really high. So in order to bring the knees down, again, you use your blanket or your towel. You fold it up as many times as necessary. And you're going to place that blanket underneath your sitting bones. So when we elevate the sitting bones in a cross-legged position, it allows the knees to release down which provides more opening into the hip flexors. So once you have chosen your seat, I'd like you to think about lifting your sternum, broadening through the upper chest, keeping the head level, and then bring your hands to prayer position at the heart center. I'd like you to lower your gaze to your fingertips and close your eyes. Relax your jaws, your lips, your tongue. Feel the breath moving softly in and out of the nose. Quietly set your intention for your practice. Softly bow the head to the heart. And on the inhalation, raise the head. Open the eyes. Release them. So we're going to begin our practice in Adamukha Virasana this morning. So that is a kneeling position. So you're going to part your knees um, a little wider than your, your chest. Your big toes are touching and you're sitting down to your heels. Then you're going to stretch your arms all the way forwards along the floor. And spread the fingers wide apart. Soften the head down. So I'd like you to push your hands forwards as you pull your outer hips back to create more length through the spine and through the side trunk. Gently take the abdominals towards the back body, towards the diaphragm. And as we prepare for Pashva Adamukha Virasana, I would like you to focus on keeping your sitting bones down. So we're going to lift our head and our chest ever so slightly and walk both hands over to the right hand side. As you take your hands over to the right, try to keep the left sitting bone connected to the left heel. Now relax your head down. You are aiming to get the sternum to align over the center of the right thigh, as best as you can match that. 
And then try not to curve the spine too much. Try and press the left side ribs in towards the spine so that you get more length from right hip to right armpit. Go back to center. And in the center, push your hands forwards, pull the out hips back, and soften the head down towards the floor. And then keep the sitting bones down as you lift your head and your chest slightly and walk both hands over towards the left hand side. As the hands walk to the left, you're trying your very best to keep your right sitting bone connected to your right heel. You're aiming to get the sternum over the center of the left thigh as best as you can. And then also feel that you're not curving too much into the spine. Try to press the right side ribs towards the spine so that you get more length from left hip to left armpit. Now walk the hands back to center. Extend the arms all the way forwards, pull the out hips back, sitting bones to the heels, head down. Spread your fingers wide apart and feel that each and every finger knuckle is pressing firmly into the floor. The arms are straight. You're rolling your biceps up to the ceiling, your triceps down to the floor. Keep that action in the arms. As you inhale, lift your hips up into the air, curl your toes under, and exhale, take the knees off the mat for Adho Mukha Svanasana, your downward facing dog. So you're straightening your legs as much as you can. You're lifting your sitting bones high into the air. Arms are straight, finger knuckles pressing firmly into the floor. Now step or walk the feet towards the hands. And once you are there, take your hands to your waist, elbows in, and on your inhalation, rise up with a flat back. Exhale, release your hands down. So you're going to step your feet together in Tadasana Mountain Pose. Keep space in the short end of your mat. And then bring your hands to prayer position at the heart center. Interlock your fingers tightly at the webbing. Inhale, press the palms of the hands straight forwards. Exhale, take the arms above the head. And now really press the palms of the hands and the finger knuckles strongly up to the ceiling. Good. Let the arm bones lift so that the side body gets its extension. Good. Release the arms down. Do the opposite interlock of the fingers. And one more time. Inhale, palms forwards. Exhale, arms up into the air. And again, press the palms of the hands, the finger knuckles strongly up to the ceiling. Lift the arm bones, lift the sides of the trunk. And on your exhalation, release the arms down. Release the arms beside your body, Tadasana. So whenever we stand in our Tadasana mountain pose, we want to stand evenly, left and right foot. And we want the front body lifting up, the back body shifting down. Now take your hands behind you and interlock your fingers. And you're squeezing your shoulder blades towards each other as you draw your shoulder heads well back and your shoulders down. Feel how stretching this way really helps the upper chest to broaden. Soften your clasp. Do the opposite interlock of the fingers. And one more time, squeeze shoulder blades towards each other. Draw the shoulder heads well back. Send the shoulders down. Feel the upper chest broadening, lifting. Release your hands beside your thighs for Tadasana, your mountain pose. Exhale completely. Inhale, reach the arms up into the air for Urvahastasana. Exhale, fold from the hips for Uttanasana. Inhale, your right leg back to a lunge. And exhale, step left foot back, Adho Mukha your downward facing dog. So arms are straight, relax the head, relax the neck. Eyes open and work on lifting the sitting bones as you open up the backs of your legs. Inhale, right foot forwards. Exhale, left foot forwards. Bring the hands to the waist, elbows in. Inhale, rise up with a flat back. Exhale, release your hands down. Now I'd like you to hook 
your right thumb in front of your left thumb and take the arms up into the air. So the palms of the hands are facing forwards. And because the two thumbs are hooked, you've got something nice there to pull on. So keeping the thumbs connected, really reach the fingertips up to the ceiling. Exhale, release the arms down. Bring left thumb in front of right, hook thumbs, lift the arms up all the way into the ceiling, have the palms of the hands facing forwards. And once again, keeping the hook of the thumbs, keep lifting the arms and the fingertips up to the ceiling. Exhale, release the arms down. So you're going to do the same thing, but the arms behind the back. Take your arms behind your back, right thumb in front of left. And again, use this clasp to assist you in squeezing your shoulder blades towards each other, drawing your shoulder heads back, shoulders down. So the palms of the hands are facing back, away from the body. Do one more, left thumb in front of right, hook the thumbs, draw your shoulder heads well back, squeeze the shoulder blades in, shoulders down, chest lifting. Release the hands, Tadasana, hands beside thighs. Exhale completely. Inhale the arms up into the air, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold from the hips, hands to the floor for Uttanasana. Inhale your left leg to step back into a lunge. Exhale your right foot back for Adho Mukha Svanasana, your downward facing dog. And again, your finger knuckles are pressing firmly into the mat, arms are straight, sitting bones lift, open up the backs of the legs, easy breaths. Then inhale, left foot forwards to lunge. Exhale, right foot beside left. Bring the hands to the waist, elbows in. Inhale, rise up, flat back. Exhale, release your hands down. So stand in the center of the mat, facing the long end of your yoga mat. Be in Tadasana, your mountain pose. We're going to explore Trikonasana and Virabhadrasana too very briefly, and then we'll go into it in more detail. So bring your middle fingers to meet to the center of the chest. Step or jump the feet wide apart for Uttita Hasta Padasana, where your ankles are underneath your wrists and your arms are extending out to the sides at shoulder height. Now you're going to revolve your entire right leg 90 degrees. Bring your left big toe in. Take an inhale to prepare and exhale. Bend into the right knee for Vyara Padrasana 2. So you want to try and align your armpits above their respective hips. You want to try and align your right ankle above your right knee. Press firmly through the outer edge of the left foot and gaze over your right fingertips. Now keeping the feet in the position that they are now, you're going to inhale, straighten your right leg. Exhale, reach the right fingertips to the right and bring the right hand down, the left arm straight up for Uttita Trikonasana. So send your right sitting bone forwards, roll your right side ribs forwards, roll your left side ribs back. Very good. Keep pulling up the kneecaps. On your inhalation, pull your body back up, toes forwards. So ankles should be underneath wrists, arms are up at shoulder height. Turn your entire left leg 90 degrees. Bring the right big toe in. On your exhalation, bend into the left knee for Virabhadrasana 2. So try and align your armpits above your hips. Have your left knee above your left ankle. You're pressing firmly through the outer edge of the right foot as you gaze over the left arm in the direction of the left fingertips. Now on your inhalation, straighten your left leg. And as you exhale, reach to the left and bring the left hand down and the right arm straight up for Uttita Trikonasana, your triangle pose. Now you're moving your left sitting bone forwards you're rolling your left side ribs forwards and your right side ribs back. Keep the legs straight and pull up the kneecaps. On your inhalation, pull your trunk back up. Exhale, toes forwards. And lightly step or jump the feet together. So we're going to go down onto our knees in preparation for Parigasana, gait posture. So the blanket can be used underneath the, the shin bones if you're finding that the floor is a little hard. So you'll be kneeling facing the long end of the mat with your entire shin bone on the blanket. You're going to step your right leg out to the side as if you're doing 
a Virabhadrasana two, a warrior two position with the right leg. So your right ankle's directly underneath your right knee. Now you're going to push the buttocks forwards, and as you push your buttocks forwards, I'd like you to open your right knee back towards the back edge of your mat. Now get your rib cage squarely facing forwards. Take the arms out to the sides, shoulder height. So the main actions that I want you to focus on here are the actions of buttocks moving forwards, right knee opening back. Think of lifting the sternum, lifting into the crown of the head. Extend all the way through the arms into the fingertips. Now come down onto your right shin bone, bring your hands onto your waist. Step your left leg out to the side. Have your left heel in line with your right knee. Have your left ankle directly underneath your left knee and look straight forwards. Take the arms out to the side, shoulder height. You're moving your buttocks forwards and you're opening your inner left knee back. Lift well into the sternum, extend through the arms into the fingertips, easy breaths. Now release your hands to your waist, come back onto the left shin bone. You want to keep your left thigh bone vertical as you extend your right leg all the way out to the side. So your right leg is straight, your right foot is flexed. So you want your right heel in line with your left knee. Then take the arms out to the sides. Pull up your right kneecap. Turn the palms of the hands up to the ceiling. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, your right hand is going to rest on the right shin bone and the left upper arm is going to come beside the left ear. Move your right sitting bone forwards and roll your left side ribs back. You can choose to look up towards the ceiling or you can look straight forwards. Maybe see if it's possible to slide the right fingertips closer to the right ankle, but the main work, the main action that I want you to focus on is the action of right sitting bone moving forwards as left side ribs roll back. On your inhalation, pull your body back up. Come onto the right shin bone. Extend your left leg all the way out to the side so that your left leg is straight, left foot is flexed. You want your right thigh bone vertical and you want your left heel in line with your right knee. Now pull up your left kneecap. Take the arms out to the side, shoulder height. Turn the palms of the hands up, lift into the sternum. Take an inhale. Exhale, left hand to left shin, right upper arm beside ear. Now you're moving your left sitting bone forwards. You're rolling your right side ribs back, left side ribs forwards. And see if you can take your left fingertips a little closer towards your left foot. But don't lose the action of left sitting bone forwards Right side ribs back. Now on your inhalation, pull your body back up. Come onto your left knee and carefully remove the blanket off your mat. Come up to stand. So we're going to repeat Virabhadrasana 2 and Trikonasana with just a little more awareness of what we've learned and experienced in our gait pose. So from your mountain pose, bring the middle fingers to meet. Step or jump the feet wide apart for Uttita Hasta Padasana, where the toes point straight forwards and the ankles are directly above the wrists, sorry, beneath the wrists. So you're going to turn your entire right leg 90, bring the left big toe in. Preparing for warrior two, take an inhale to prepare, exhale, bend into the right knee. Now I'd like you to bring your hands onto your waist just for a moment. Remember what we did when we were on our shin bones for our gait pose. I want you to push your buttocks forwards and open your right knee back. Now extend the arms out to the sides. Turn the gaze, look over the right fingertips. Keep pressing firmly through outer edge of left foot. And keep moving buttocks forwards as you open right knee back. Keep lifting into sternum. On your inhalation, straighten your right leg, toes turn forwards. You're going to turn your entire left leg 90 degrees, right big toe in. Take an inhale to prepare. Exhale, bend into the left knee for Virabhadrasana 2. 
Bring your hands onto your waist again, just so that you can focus on what's happening in the pelvis and the legs. So buttocks moves forwards as inner left knee moves back. Now bring the arms out to the sides again, shoulder height. Gaze over your left fingertips. Keep pushing buttocks forwards as left knee opens back. Keep lifting into the sternum. Keep lifting into the crown of the head. Now on your inhalation, straighten left leg. Exhale, toes forwards. And lightly step or jump feet together. Tadasana, mountain pose. Uttita Trikonasana, bring middle fingers to meet. Step or jump the feet wide apart. Ankles underneath wrists. Turn your entire right leg 90 degrees. Bring the left big toe in. Take an inhale to prepare and exhale, reach to the right. Bring the right hand down, the left arm straight up. So again, reflecting on what we did in our gate pose and bringing that awareness into our trikonasana, I want you to move your right sitting bone forwards as you roll your left side ribs back, roll your right side ribs forwards. Keep taking the sternum towards the crown of the head. Keep your legs strong and firm. Pull up your kneecaps. Now on your inhalation, pull your trunk back up. Toes forwards. Rotate your entire left leg 90 degrees. Right big toe in. Take an inhale to prepare. Exhale, reach to the left. Left hand down, right arm up. You're moving your left sitting bone forwards as you open your chest and roll your right side ribs back. Left side ribs roll forwards. Keep lifting sternum to crown. Keep your legs strong. Pull up your kneecaps. On your inhalation, you're going to lift your trunk all the way back up. Exhale, toes forwards. And lightly step or jump the feet together. Good. Release your hands beside your thumbs. Roll the thumbs out to the sides. Inhale the arms out and up. Hook right thumb in front of left. Palms are facing forwards. Pull your fingertips up to the ceiling. Lift the sides of the trunk. Exhale, release your arms beside you all the way out, out and down. Hook your thumbs behind your back. Right thumb in front of left. Palms are facing back. Pull your shoulder heads well back. Draw the shoulders down. Lift the upper chest. Release the hands beside the thighs, Tadasana. Roll thumbs out. Inhale, arms out and up, left thumb in front of right, palms facing forwards, hook the thumbs and pull the fingertips up to the ceiling. Exhale, the arms out and down. Take the arms behind you, left thumb in front of right, palms face back, draw the shoulder heads back. Lift the upper chest, shoulders well down. Exhale, release the arms beside your thighs. Now turn to face the short end of the mat. And have your feet hip width apart so that your heels are underneath your sitting bones. Hands on the waist, you're going to tuck your elbows well in. Keep taking the shoulder blades towards each other. Keep taking the shoulders down. And I want you to start lifting your sternum up, 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 up towards the ceiling. You can lift your chin slightly if this feels okay for your neck and look up. But really focus on lifting the sternum. Good, release, look straight forwards. Now some of you will be able to do this, others not. I want you to see if you can place the palms of the hands onto the lower back with the fingers pointing straight up. Fingers pointing straight up. Okay, so if this is difficult for you, good. You bring your hands onto your back waist with your thumbs facing each other, the fingers wrapping around the sides of the trunk. Okay, so choose your hand position that feels best. One more time, standing in Tadasana, so align your toes, feet hip width apart. You're going to start lifting the sternum up, 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 up. Draw the shoulder blades towards each other and maybe look up towards the ceiling if that feels okay for your neck. Focus on lifting the sternum. Sternum up, sternum up, sternum up. Good. Carefully come back up to standing. Hands beside thighs, feet together, Tadasana. Feet together, Tadasana. Exhale completely. Inhale, lead with the thumbs, arms up for Urvastasana. Exhale, fold from the hips for Uttanasana. 
Inhale, right leg steps back to lunge. Exhale, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. On your inhale, right foot steps forwards. On your exhale, left foot steps forwards. Bring hands to waist, elbows in. Lead with a sternum. Inhale, come all the way up with a flat back. Exhale, hands beside thighs. Again, lead with thumbs. Inhale, arms up. Urvastasana. Exhale, fold from the hips. Hands to the floor. Uttanasana. Inhale, left leg steps back to lunge. Exhale, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. On your inhalation, left foot steps forwards to lunge. Exhale, right foot steps beside left. Bring your hands to your waist, elbows in. Again, lead with the sternum. Inhale to come all the way back up. Exhale, hands beside thighs. Now we're going to come down onto our shin bones again. If you would like to kneel on the blanket, you may. We're preparing for Ushtrasana, our camel pose. So we're going to have the knees hip width apart, the feet hip width apart, the toes pointing straight back. And we are going to just begin practicing with the hands on the waist. So you want to move your buttocks forwards. You want to tuck your elbows in and you're going to lift your sternum up, up, up towards the ceiling and just let the upper back curve. You may feel comfortable looking up towards the ceiling. You may feel comfortable releasing your head back. Just do what feels okay on your neck. But focus on lifting the sternum. Keep lifting the sternum, lifting the sternum. Good. Now on your inhalation, lift trunk, come up to sit. I would like you to sit down onto your heels. Bring your hands to prayer position at the heart center. Interlock your fingers. Inhale, press palms forwards. Exhale, arms up into the air. Once again, press the finger knuckles up to the ceiling. Good. Release your arms down. Do the opposite interlock of the fingers. Inhale, palms forwards. Exhale, take the arms all the way up into the air. Stretch. Good. Release the arms down. Take the arms behind you. First interlock of the fingers. Squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. Take the shoulder heads well back. Well done. Lift your chest. Release. Do the opposite interlock of the fingers. Draw the shoulder heads well back. Shoulders down. Shoulder blades in. Lift the chest. So this is an action that we're trying to bring into our Shtrasana camel. Okay. Carefully release. Come back up into the shin bones again. This time we're going to curl the toes under. Have your feet hip width apart, knees hip width apart. Bring your hands onto your waist, elbows in. Now move the buttocks forwards, lift the chest, and either keep your hands onto your waist or see if you can bring your hands to your heels. Now keep moving the thigh bones forwards, buttocks forwards, roll your upper arms out so that your sternum lifts your shoulder blades squeeze together. You can look forwards up to the ceiling or you can let the head drop back just depending on what the neck wants to do. Focus on moving thigh bones forwards and opening up the heart. On your inhalation, carefully come back up. Sit down on your heels for Vajrasana. If this is a difficult pose to do, you can always do it in cross legs. Okay, now you're going to hook your right thumb in front of your left and stretch your fingertips up to the ceiling. Palms of the hands are facing forwards. Now you're going to lift the chest up and twist towards the right. So turn your body towards the right. Keep lifting up, keep turning. Good, come back to center. Left thumb in front of right. Pull the fingertips up to the ceiling. Lift and turn to the left. Keep lifting and turning. Sitting bones down. Good. Release. Come back to center. Take the arms behind the back. Right thumb in front of left. Palms face back. Squeeze your shoulder blades in. Lift and open chest. Change the hook of the thumbs. Left in front of right. Squeeze shoulder blades in. Lift and open chest. Release. And carefully come back up onto the shin bones. So for your last Ushtrasana, 
You're going to have your feet and your knees hip width apart and the tops of the feet flat on the floor. So you're pressing your shin bones firmly down. You're going to move your buttocks forwards. Start to lift into the sternum. And you can either keep your hands onto your waist or you can bring your hands onto your heels. If your heels are a little bit too far beyond your reach, then curl your toes under again. So focus on pushing shin bones down, thigh bones forwards, buttocks forwards, lift and open the chest. You're rolling your upper arms out to squeeze your shoulder blades in and you can look forwards up to the ceiling or just let the head softly release all the way back. Beautiful. On your inhalation, carefully come to sit. And on your exhalation, sit down onto the heels. Now we just release both feet out to the side so that we can sit in Dandasana, which is our staff pose where our legs are fully extended in front of us. So pull the buttocks face straight back, press into the fingertips, have the hands just slightly behind the hips and lift your chest, open up. Now we're going to bend our knees and swing both feet towards the left in preparation for Bharad Vajrasana. So we want to try and have the sitting bones on the floor. For most of us, this is impossible. And this is where the blanket comes in. So if you look at Dean, you can see that his left sitting bone is slightly lifted. So he's going to take his blanket or his towel and he's going to fold it up to an appropriate height so that as he sits on it, the sitting bones are evenly pressed onto the, the blanket. So you can either sit both sitting bones on the blanket or you can place your right sitting bone on the blanket to encourage the left sitting bone to descend. So having a look at his feet, the right toes are pointing towards the left and the left shin bone is resting on the arch of the right foot with the left toes pointing straight back. So in preparation to twist, he's going to bring the left hand to the right shin bone. He's going to bring the right hand in line with the base of the spine. On his inhale, he's going to sit nice and tall. And on his exhalation, he's going to turn the tummy towards the right. And then he just keeps working with his breath, inhaling to sit a little taller, exhaling to turn the ribs, and then to turn the shoulders, and lastly to turn the head. And as he keeps working his twist, he wants to focus on releasing the left sitting bone down towards the floor as the sternum lifts up towards the ceiling. Broaden through your collarbones. Open your upper chest. Carefully release. Extend both legs forwards for Dandasana, staff pose. Come off your blanket or your towel. Swing both knees over towards the right hand side and then elevate the left sitting bone onto your towel or blanket. So you want to release your right sitting bone down towards the floor so that the hips are more level and even. Your left toes are pointing towards the right and the right shin bone is resting on the arch of the left foot with the right toes pointing straight back. Now lift your chest. You're going to bring your right hand to your left thigh, bring your left hand behind you, line up the hand at the base of the spine, and lift and turn with your breath. So you inhale to sit tall, and then you exhale to turn. Remember to turn first through the abdominals, then through the rib cage, then through the shoulders, finally the head turns. As you continue to lift and turn with your breathing, I'd like you to focus on dropping the right sitting bone down and lifting and opening up the chest. Now on your exhalation, gently release. Stretch both legs forwards, Dandasana, staff pose. So open up the backs of the legs, lift and open chest. And then we're going to use the blanket as a support in our Shavasana. So what I'd like you to do is open up your blanket or your towel. So Dean's going to open it up one more time. Okay. And he's going to roll the blanket from the, the long end of the mat, the, sorry, the blanket, the one that's folded, so it's nice and clean. And he's going to roll quite a tight sausage.
So we're making this blanket or this towel roll to be placed underneath the head and the spine. So you're going to place the, the, your roll on your sticky mat. And you're going to be sitting on the floor, not on the blanket. And you're going to carefully release the spine all the way down onto your blanket roll. Now, if your blanket roll is not as long as the one that we are using here, then focus on supporting your head and your upper back with, with the, the blanket roll because that's the area of the body that we're trying to open. So you're going to slowly extend one leg forwards followed by the other. And just let the toes and the thighs flop out towards the sides. You can have your arms at quite a, a wide angle from the body, so almost a 90 degree angle. And feel that your shoulder heads are releasing down towards the floor on either side of your blanket roll. I'd like you to close your eyes. Notice how the body feels here. If there is discomfort in the lower back, you might just want to wriggle away from your blanket roll slightly so that it's not pressing so much into the lumbar spine. Make sure that you're very comfortable. If there's a lot of tightness running along the frontal shoulder heads or along the, the frontal chest, you may want to decrease the, the angle of your arms in relation to the trunk. You may want to move towards a 45 degree angle. But just feel around. Notice what the blanket roll is doing to your chest. So by supporting the spine in this way, the shoulder heads naturally release down on either side of the blanket roll, which gives us more of an opening and a broadness through the upper chest. Feel the weight of the arms sinking down. Feel the weight of the legs sinking down. And feel the weight of the skull sinking into the blanket. And as you allow the weight of your body to release down, just notice how the body softens, the body quietens. Just notice how you're breathing. A soft jaw, soft tongue. Onto this lovely openness and space that you have created in the upper chest.
If you feel that your Shavasana is incomplete and you would like to stay here for longer, please stay. For the purpose of closing this online class, we're going to start moving fingers and toes. I'm going to bend the knees up to the ceiling and roll carefully off the blanket roll onto the right hand side. Just relax here. Yeah? Let the back body soften. Let the body soften into its new shape. And then without looking around too much, you're going to come to your seated position. Either your Vajrasana or your Sastikasana. So either your kneeling or your cross-legged position. Lift into the sternum, broaden through the upper chest. And bring your hands to prayer at the heart center. Lowering your gaze to your fingertips, closing your eyes. Exhalation, bow the head to the heart. And on the inhalation, raise the head. 